Hello everybody, my name's Atley, welcome back to my SnowRunner hard mode playthrough. We're in Yukon, uh, in uh, Tetra Force, picking up where we left off the last episode. I've just driven across from the loading point where I loaded up these missile beams and small pipes and we're going to try and get up to the top of the mountain and we are going to use the same route that I tried in the last episode coming down in the Zix and I did get down in the Zix but I rejected that route at that time in the force because I didn't feel like doing that with cargo but I'm stubborn and I'm going to try again last time I was crossing up near that rock here but I've had a little bit of a scout on my normal save and this is a pretty good crossing. It doesn't come up anywhere near as deep as further downstream where I was crossing up the, uh, in the last episode. And it seems to work okay. Force came across here. So this is the force, and just as a reminder for people, I put the original stock tires, which are mud tires, back on it. Just because I want to do a comparison for my own benefit, really. So yeah, we got mud tires on, we got six slots of cargo, quite heavy cargo, and I'm gonna have a go at getting up the route that was mentioned in comments by Friday. I did use it in, or I did try it in the Zix, just as a kind of test. I wasn't really able to, I didn't fully understand the comment so what I tried was more or less right, but hug the hug the pipeline a little bit more, or conveyor belt, whatever it is. So we're just getting back to the bridges. It is a little bit coming into dark, so I want to try and get this done before it gets dark, because the route is going to involve winching, and I just don't want it to be pitch dark for you guys. So we'll try back, try and get up the top, because it is if you can pull it off, it is a basically a straight line from the loading point that I just did to here and then the line of that conveyor belt straight up through those trees to the drop off point so if you can pull it off it's definitely a more efficient route to use and we're going to basically go straight up that hill following this pipeline as close as we can get some lights on because it is possibly going to be dark by the time I get there straight into low with a dip lock going it's a bit rocky at the start of it that's the only real challenge I think or it's, that is a real challenge rather I don't think that's a titanium tree I think that's a tree that I could get past get past that little tree and then we're off obvious risks here are trailer getting snagged on trees so I do want to be trying to go as straight a line as I can Brakes holding me. Use a winch to give me a bit of forward momentum. I'm going to try going to the left of this tree. I think you could get through that gap, but this seems to work. I'll stay left of this next one as well. Partly it gets me out of those rocks. I 
and then we'll get back in tight here Try and get off that tree in front. sure why it's not grabbing the tree that's in the line of where my camera is going but so that tree gets me in a straight line that handbrake straight into it this episode eh no messing fight in daylight really see if we can get a bit of help from a winch point on the trailer to this tree Winching on the trailer is always a little bit dangerous because it's a bit of a tip hazard. But at the same time, when you're going uphill like this, the trailer itself acts like a pe like a pendulum to keep you pointing downhill. If that makes sense. And because it's basically straight up the hill, yes, there's a ri the risk of uh, getting the line wrong or getting stuck on a tree. But actually, in comparison to other risks, it's a lot less of a tip hazard than the other way that I've been driving these. I'm going to use my other trip from comments, but adjusting the line while you've got another different line holding you I think I'm going to go left of these trees I feel like these rocks are a bit of a problem and if I can make that clean snow and then turn it back I feel like that might be a better line that's a split tree isn't it or is that just a graphic glitch on a tree got to the top have we still got all of our cargo I think so Get past the edge of this pulse. There we go. There we go. It looks like we got here with all of our cargo. I'm going to give myself a pat on the back. Thank you, Faraday. I made it work. I think it's the last load of cargo that I would be coming from that side anyway. But I was just stubborn enough that I wanted to make it work. Oh, that little. Oh, 
really. Really, I saw it do that damage to the front wheels. I went over it with the back wheels anyway. <laughs> uh, took out a tire. Yeah, saw it do some damage to the front wheels and went over the back anyway. It's taken out my third tire on the right side. Okay, so success. Let's activate the contract. So it needed one metal beam, which we've got, two small pipes. Now it needs two wooden planks, two concrete blocks. I know that the concrete blocks are down at the railway station. Let's look in the map just to make sure. Have we got any spare parts in here? Yeah, I've got wheels. I've got wheels in that maintenance trailer. So down at the railway station, I can repair myself the damage I just did, or at least some of it, and get a spare. I can definitely get a spare wheel. So we're going to go down to the railway station, and we've also got to get wood framing. Uh, wood framing I might just get at the, uh, up here so for that it's not really worth me taking the trailer I may as well do two trips with a truck on its own first one down to the railway station get two concrete blocks and fix that wheel and then deliver that and then a second trip to get wood framing and that would complete reinvigorating the mind so if i can do that in this episode great and that was a fairly painless apart from the fact that i drove over a concrete slab that i didn't think would do that much damage <laughs> twice uh fairly quick start to, to in terms of getting that first bit of action done let's drop this trailer move myself forward nope. Put the trailer back on I don't want to leave the trailer in the delivery zone I'm going to take the trailer with me when I move on from here because I do need it on the map I just don't need it for what I'm about to do And I may as well drag it down when I've got wheels repaired. So I'm going to leave it there. And then we'll run down without a trailer. Be nice. A bit quicker. Uh, let me just turn off those trackers because they're a bit... Bit difficult, isn't it? It'd be nice to finish this contract today. I think it's the biggest of the cargo apocalypse style contracts. I've lost track of how many episodes it's been, but it would be nice to get it finished. Driving at night in the snowy area is not too bad because you get enough reflected light. But when we go into the leave the snow line and go into the woods, 
I think I'll put it into cab view. I think the visibility is slightly better. So my fuel is fine because I got some in the roof, so I'll fill up at the Kodiak on the way back. through the trees slightly quicker just had a suggestion in comments that I quite like the idea of I've been him and am about whether to just go to phase 8 or whether to go continue the release order and go to Wisconsin next and I am going to go to Wisconsin I'm pretty sure but the suggestion was to, uh, on the on the weekend that phase 8 comes out of public test and hits live do a special expedition to go and get the pike which looks like it's going to be a useful truck to get anyway and it gives me something to do in phase 8 that kind of Good, good for the channel, good for me to go and get another truck, but do it as a, as a one-off. Now, I don't know how involved getting the Pike is, but do it as a one-off special expedition. So, yeah, I like that. I like that as a suggestion. Thanks, Steve. I'm just going to hook this trailer up. I'm just going to get a better line on it. I'll sort my wheel out first before I forget and drive off, because I will do that. You guys know that. But steering was hard work when you're manoeuvring in a yard like this. Attach. Repair. So the maintenance trailer hasn't got repair points. My suspension's almost gone. That's worrying. I did a big old chunk of damage, didn't I? But I can fix my wheel. I just have to try not to do any suspension damage. Right, concrete blocks, please. Two into the loading platform. Restore the grain, pack the cargo, and we'll do some fuel. Mm, 52. Should be enough to get back to the Kodiak. Let's go. And this time, because I haven't got a trailer involved, I'll use the railway line on the way back as well. It's a bit quicker than going down through the mud. The only issue with doing this region the way that I've done it, and in hindsight, I probably should have done Flooded Foothills first and finished at Big Salmon Peak for this reason, is that the repair resupply place is in Big Salmon Peak. I hope it's coming this way. Yeah, it's there, about there. I'm not entirely sure where to leave the track, but so I'll just mark it for convenience. I may as well just follow it to the end. Use the road. Avoid the mud altogether. Yeah. 
So any repair points I need to buy, I've got to trek quite a long way back to Big Salmon Peak to get them because there's no resupply zone in flooded foothills, which is a real pain. I suppose if I'd have done my early efforts in this map, I'd have had the same problem. You still got to go and get repair points when you need them. But if I'd have finished in Big Salmon Peak, it would have been a bit easier to get all of the trucks resupplied before exiting the region to go to Wisconsin. There we go. I could probably put wooden planks on top of this and drive back. We have two lots of wooden planks double stacked, but I'm not going to. It um, would probably work, and in the real world you would, but no, I'm not going to. Stick to the route that I've done, and then into the logging camp. Engine off. Refuel. That is my fuel add-on, down to 21 litres. But the... Oh, so I've got to remember that now. I've basically got what's in the Kodiak. So I've got 221 litres at this location. Force is full, but the Kodiak's nearly empty. Mixing up the camera angles a little bit. The other thing with hindsight that I would do differently for this region is I wouldn't have delivered the service trailer, the 1500 points service trailer to the three POIs um, I half expected it to not despawn because quite often they don't but yeah it would have been probably more used to me to hang on to that trailer as a repair store and then hand it in almost last Cargo, two concrete blocks, done. So, I now need wooden planks, two lots of. Just track that so I can confirm, but I think the easiest ones to get to are probably these. I mean, back up through here, which is the kind of default route, if you weren't using the route I do, and then try and avoid Falling in the icy lake and pick up those. And then the cabins are already there because they registered from phase one. That would complete it. I don't think it's worth me going downhill for these other ones. So I think it is a case of going up top. Uh, and it's now morning, so we should have a little bit more light. Nice to see. And then if I'm, on, if I'm right, I don't think this becomes a cargo delivery place. If I'm right, that's the last thing up here that we have to do in terms of deliveries. The only other thing is to come up and grab that ore trailer and take it into Big Salmon Peak. So that's quite exciting. So when we come back with the wooden planks and then leave, I'll take this trailer down with me then. Don't need to take it now.
Any rollers, metals. Not done any crafting on this map yet. Well, apart from the cabins. I think that one turns metal beams into metal rolls. Happy enough with these tyres. Obviously, I'm not dragging a trailer full of cargo with me, so I haven't had a proper comparison apart from going up through the hill. Um, but yeah, these tyres seem to be doing alright. I just need to avoid going into the lake now, because I know this has got quite a lot of broken ice. Try and stay out of it, basically. And then where's this house is down here? Sorry, mate. I'm going to steal your house. That's all right with you. Why have I got to knock his house down? Why don't I just take the planks that are behind laying on the floor without destructing the house? That'd be a more civil thing to do, wouldn't it? I was gone. Stop the engine. Restore the crane. Back the cargo. Now, slight distraction. I uh, while I was loading the crane there, I was thinking about this. If I remember rightly. Go to the Big Salmon Peak map. I think my Ford is up here and it's got repair points. And it's pretty near the gateway. Which is quite close to where I am now. So I think I'm going to bring the Ford down here into the gateway. And then I can fix the suspension on that before I get myself in trouble. So, turn around. The Ford is basically here from when it did a rescue, a fuel rescue for the Tager. I haven't used it since. When the Tager was doing that service trailer delivery, it ran out of fuel. And I brought the Ford up. So I'll bring this through and then I can I can join up with the Touch of Force before I do the delivery. While it's because it's daylight, so why not? Just to jump in the port for a change. And there's probably some scout related stuff that I'd want to do on the other map anyway. Uh, I've forgotten where my Tatarin is. It might be in Don. I may have left my Tatarin in Don. I think so. I don't think I took the Tatarin to Amir, did I? Probably think about which mud tires I would put on this. Out of choice. Little bit of a distraction, but I think it's worth it to get my suspension fixed. Running around on 28 suspension on a big truck is not good for you.
So I'd need to cross the lake. And normally in a truck, find my way across here somewhere. That's where that fuel trailer is as well, so that'll be handy. I just need to make sure I can cross without getting stuck. Because it's not predictable safe ice like we're used to on other maps. So that's not bad there, I think. Get through a bit of speed. That worked. So this is a trailer that I've got to deliver, and it's not far away that I've got to deliver it either. So uh, I, I might leave the port up here to do that. Um, but uh, refuel. It's five hundred. It's not bad. Into the board, into the pickup, and into the utility. 210 left. But I'm now full. More importantly, I've now got my repair points within about in distance of the Tatra. Got another hundred points in there. It's not bad. Bunch of force. Two hundred and ninety-nine repair points needed. All but twenty of my suspension done. Cool. But that is all of my repair points now gone from the pickup truck. I suppose I may as well. Fill that up because I can always go back and get some in the Ford. But I am going to change truck and carry on with my mission. I think that was a worthwhile diversion. Before I move forward, there's got to be a better route. What about a Dineva? Because I don't like going around that icy lake, basically. What about... Well, some, somehow, from a Dineva area through to here. There's got to be a better route than going over the breaking lake. Let's have a look. So the spiky terrain there, just briefly while I'm going slow past it, I had a comment and I, I did a lot of reading based on that comment and it seems to have been introduced in a, in a certain version of AMD graphics card drivers and there's a, there's a post on, I think it might be the Steam workshop forums, there's a post that says do a full uninstall of your drivers and then go back to a specific version. I've done that. I've still got spiky terrain. So I don't know whether mine is a slightly different variant of the problem. Or what. But I've still got the same problem, yeah. So I may just put myself on the latest drivers. Because I, 
I do a fairly good job of just ignoring it a lot, not letting it bother me. And I don't get comments to suggest it particularly bothers you guys. So it is what it is, kind of scenario. But apparently, I've seen posts from both the developer and from AMD saying they're aware of the problem and they're working on a fix. So I think my best chance of getting it fixed is to be on the latest drivers. Because otherwise they could fix it in a patch and I wouldn't even know they've done it. Because I've stopped at the moment. I've, I've wound back my drivers to an earlier version and then I've disabled updates, but it hasn't fixed the problem. So I think I might re-enable updates and just stay on the latest and hope that they fix it at some point. But it does appear to be an AMD issue rather than a SnowRunner issue. If people are fixing it by changing their AMD drivers and it works for them, then brilliant. A bit frustrating it doesn't work for me, but so be it. These tyres have done all right, yeah. Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh. There was nothing I could... <laughs> I saw that happening. I don't even have to slow-mo that. I saw that happening. It was... It hit the rock. It started tipping, but there was nothing. The only thing I could winch to was on the wrong side. Uh, maybe if I'd have steered into the tip the right way, I could have got it down on its wheels first. Oh no. One of my choices. I don't think the board is going to pull this back on its wheels. I think I need the Zix. Which is all the way down there. No good crying about it. Get on with it. How close am I? I was just thinking this is a short episode. Uh, what What would I do? after this cargo if anything or would I just accept the fact that it's a short episode and get it delivered and give myself a slightly easier job of editing what would I do and then that happens I haven't been back to the garage yet so I'm on the weaker engine try and manoeuvre it enough that those rocks just stuck on rocks. I was literally, well, I was driving along while I was talking, thinking, yeah, this is quite a short episode. I just looked over at my recording timer. I'm thinking, if I deliver this without any issues, this is going to be a really short episode. And then, not looking at precisely. And that's one thing that, you know, maybe not, maybe I wouldn't be paying more attention, but. I feel like if I was in cab view more, if I was in cab view, I probably would have seen that rock and not driven over it. This shouldn't be struggling up here. I've got to get me a bigger engine in this. A dragon wagon. I reload the timber as well. I was going too fast when I, that was the thing. It was the velocity that caused me to bounce enough to tip over. But I'd go in, if I'd have been going a bit slower, not all gung-ho about getting my delivery done, I would have hit the rock and just pushed it out of the way. But hitting it at that speed, tip, off you go. You almost imagine the Zix is gonna come around the corner and say, right, force, we've had this conversation before, mate. You need to stop falling over. If trucks could talk. Let's repair the force. So the force is now fully repaired. And then needs to reload its cargo. Which is a little bit annoying.
and because we're about to hand it in, we'll track it. See you later, Zix. Thanks again, mate. Appreciate it. And as I've said before, the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to push straight on with the ore sorter, which is another two phase, fairly significant cargo based contract. Keeping an eye out for big rocks. Because that's a big old bounce mine, wasn't it? <laughs> what am I like? The thing is, I do try to mix up the camera angles a little bit to make the truck a bit more interesting, make the footage a bit more interesting. But that does mean that I'm I'm gonna miss rocks in my path. Versus if I was just focused a hundred percent on where am I driving. Like I quite like coming into this angle. For some of the footage. Because I can make it look uh, like a cool cut. Like a Top Gear episode. With a camera car in front of me. Right, last two bits of cargo. Reinvigorating the old mine. What could possibly go wrong now, right? Even I can't tip it here. Although I could delete the suspension as we all boat as we all know. Engine off. I'm expecting a cutscene to finish this. This is exciting. Two planks. Only thing that's needed. One, two. $49,000 reward. Push me up over 100k again. That's pretty good, isn't it? I, I get what they've done, right? It's it's a lot less work for the devs to give you a massive contract that pays well than to do six different contracts to earn the same amount of money for shifting the same amount of cargo. Um, I didn't find this as grindy as I did the factory stuff. But maybe that's a bit just because I got used to it. I've enjoyed this one. Not bad at all. 49 grand. That's good. I like that. Just have a little look around. Oh, mine looks impressive. But of course, they can't be operational till we fix their sorter and conveyor belt. So I'll worry about that for next episode. I hope you enjoyed watching this. It went fairly well, I think. I wanted to complete this contract today. Mission accomplished. A little bit of a diversion to get me back on my wheels and to fix my suspension. But good to have the Ford on this map anyway. And didn't take too long to get the Zix up there. So I hope you enjoyed this episode. Thank you very much for watching. Hope to see you in the next one. In the meantime, thank you very much and goodbye. <laughs>